Hello everyone, in the following video I will show you how to develop colorful visualizations using vector files and a digital elevation model. For the first exercise we're gonna download a point dataset with the three inventory of the Department of Parks and Recreation in the City and County of Denver. We're gonna use the Denver Open Data Catalog and we're going to look for trees or tree inventory and we're going to download the only data set that appear in the um, in the search results so we're going to download the shape file format and we're going to go to QGIS and I'm gonna open the file. QGIS has the possibility to open directly zip files which is very handy in this occasion because uh, the files are zipped. So I already downloaded a uh, preliminary the file that we're gonna need. So I'm just gonna look for it. Is this one as you can see it's a zip file and I just need to select it and open it so this is the data set and what we're gonna do is to create a grid file uh, using the extent of the tree inventory uh, as a the extent of the grid to create the grid it's very simple you just have to go to processing toolbox grid grid and there is an option called create grid and we're gonna choose grid type hexagon and the grid extent is gonna be the calculate from layer three inventory now there is a problem here with the file it's telling us that it's in degrees so one of the first steps that you need to take into consideration before going further is to check if your data file your data layer your layer or just your uh, data set it's in meters because when your data is in degrees it's really hard to calculate so if we put one here it means one degree which is um, very very difficult to calculate in meters unless you are already in a coordinate system that can calculate that so we're gonna close this first and we're gonna change this so we're going to project this data set and we're going to use the tool free project layer and we're going to transform this data set into pseudo mercator And now, once it's created, we can remove the three inventory layer, the original one, which is in degrees, and just keep the one that is in meters. In here, if you press this button, you can also use the pseudo mercator, so all your project will be in meters. Okay, now we can create the grid. And you won't see the error again. Okay, so hexagon, the grid extent is gonna be calculated from the layer. 
and the size of the polygons, in this case the hexagons, is going to be horizontally of 500 or whatever you want. Uh, I'm choosing 500 meters because I want big hexagons and 500 meters of vertical spacing. And that's it. It's going to be a temporary layer. So the result is like this, but if you zoom in, you will see the difference. Okay. So what I'm going to do is to calculate the amount of trees that fall inside of each of these polygons. So to do that, there is a tool called count points in polygon. So you open that tool, you select your grid as your polygon layer, and the points eventually is the reprojected uh, tree inventory. And that's it. Uh, unless you want to calculate specifically uh, s certain classes of trees, uh, you can do that here by selecting one of these options, which are part of the database of the tree inventory. But in this occasion, we just want to calculate the number of trees inside of these polygons. Uh, this process takes a bit um, takes time so I already calculated in advance but you just have to press run um, so I'm gonna open the layer that I already calculated Okay, here it is. So if I check the attribute table of this layer, you will see that it's uh, formed by uh, an ID and then the size of each hexagon and the number of points in each hexagon. So now we want to map this. So before we continue, instead of displaying all the hexagons available, let's gonna display only the hexagons with three information. So we right click on this layer and then go to filter. And then we're gonna tell the program that we want all the, the hexagons which number is higher than zero. So only these uh, hexagons are going to be visible. And there you go. So the layer looks similar to the original one, which is this one. But the main difference is that this one is just conformed by polygons. Now we can map this using a choropleptic map. So click on the layer, styles, and then graduated. And we can select the number of points, which in this case correspond to the number of trees. And then you just can classify. In this case, I'm going to choose instead of equal count, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to choose natural breaks. And there you go. Now the problem with this, and, and it's something personal that I don't like, is that all the hexagons are close together. So if I want to make them appear as if they were separated, so the thing that I can do is to, before I um, 
So what I can do is to change the symbol. So I'm going to go to this menu, which is just pressing this arrow. And then I'm going to go to configure symbol. And in here, I'm going to go to simple fill. And in symbol layer type, I'm going to choose geometry generator. So right now it's just presenting the geometry as it is. But I want an inside buffer. So if I just write buffer, open parentheses. So I'm going to create a buffer of this geometry. And it's going to be, oops. Sorry about that. So the buffer of this geometry, but it's going to be negative. So it will go inside the geometry instead of outside the geometry. And I'm going to make a buffer of about 50 meters uh, uh, of the edge of the, of the polygon. And I close the parentheses. And now you can see how the polygons look like. If I return to the previous screen and then I reclassify my hexagons, I can see them now like that. And on top of, uh, um, below this, we can just add a background layer using quick map services. So I'm going to choose Google satellite. And I'm going to blend this choropletic map using layer rendering. And I'm going to choose multiply or overlay. Yeah, overlay and I'm going to choose the color ramp to greens. Yeah, that's it. In the following example, I'm going to show you how to create a cartogram very easily using a plugin in Kujus called Cartogram 3. Uh, you can find out more about this kind of visualization in this webpage called World Mapper. In this webpage, you can find several maps using this technique of representing data and well, as you can see, they have created several maps about the recent COVID pandemic, but also you can find information on urban population, earthquakes, etc. So for our example, we're going to use data from the Denver Open Data Catalog. And in particular, I'm interested in the census. I'm just going to look for census and then you will be presented with a list of results. Unfortunately, the census tracks of 2000 are not working properly. I don't know if there is an issue with the geometry, but you can use the census tracks 2010, which include information from the census of 2010. Um, but it's already corrected. The, the geometry is working properly with the Cartogram 3 plugin in QGIS. So you just click on this, then you uh, are presented with a list of options available for download. Uh, personally, I like the shapefile version, but you can also download the GDB or R3 Personal Geo database version. Uh, I won't recommend use the Google KML or the AutoCAD BWG because then you will not have the, um, the census data.
So I'm going to download the shape file. Once you download the shape file, uh, you will get a zip file. Fortunately for us, QGIS is able to read directly from the zip file. So you don't have to uncompress this file. So you can just drag this file into your QGIS layer panel and you will be presented with the shape file and the polygons. So the first thing you want to do to create your cartogram is to install the plugin. So I already have installed the plugin, but if you haven't done so, you have to go to the menu plugins, manage and install plugins, look for cartogram, and it's called cartogram 3 click on the plugin and then install it in here so you will have a button that says install plugin so in my case it's already installed so I'm just going to close it and then to access the plugin you have to go to the vector menu then you will see the cartogram menu and you have to compute a cartogram so since we have only one layer available in our layers panel, uh, it's going to be chosen for you. So you just have to select the layer that you want to transform into a cartogram and then select the field that you want to use to create the cartogram. So in this case, in this example, I'm just going to choose population and I'm going to click OK. So as you can see now the cartogram is created and automatically the plugin will deactivate your original layer and you will see only your cartogram but then you can just click here to activate your original layer just to see the differences if you want to change the styling of your cartogram you can just click in this small button be sure that you are uh, selecting your layer that you want to style and here you will have the options to style your cartogram so by choosing single symbol you will see only one color but if you choose graduated and you select a value so in this case it could be population and then you just classify this you will see the cartogram as a core objective map the other exercise that you can do using the same file is that represent these polygons in a 3d shape format so what we're going to do first is to transform this file into a file that um, it's in meters rather than degrees. If you take a look at the coordinate system of this file by pressing secondary click and then go to properties and if you go to information you will see the uh, coordinate system used here which is WGS84 geographic and the unit its degrees so we want to change this so our values are going to be in meters and we can work with that kind of information so if you go to the menu processing and then click on toolbox and look for something called pro reproject layer and then you just have to select your layer in this case we're going to choose the census tracks 2010 and the target the coordinate system target is going to be the same datum so wgs84 but 
we're going to choose pseudo mercator I, right now it's already uh, in my list of available uh, coordinate systems but if it's not there you can go to this button so click on that button and look for pseudo mercator So in my case, because I recently have used this coordinate system, it's available here. But if you haven't, you will be able to choose it from here. Now, uh, there are two types of pseudo mercator. The one that we want to use is this one with the EPSG code 3857, which is the same pseudo mercator that uh, systems such as Google Earth or Bing Maps are using. And if you take a look on here, until the end, you will see that the system uh, is using meters. So you just have to click on the chosen coordinate system and then OK and run. You will create a temporary layer, so don't worry about that. We Later on, we can make it permanent. So run it. And then once it's done, close this. So your new layer is going to be called just reprojected. By right clicking and then go to rename layer, you can just choose the same name. So we can call it Census Fact 2010. But now it's reprojected. All right. So now we can deselect the original file. And actually, we can take a look on the properties of this new layer. And if we go down, you can see that now we have the, the same layer but in meters. So we can press OK. And now what we can want to do is to transform these polygons into a new kind of cartogram, but using the geometry generator of um, QGIS. So there are two ways of doing this. One is just visually, so by changing the style of this layer. So if we go to the styling panel, and once we see this, we need to press on simple fill. We need to click on it. I'm going to close the, the toolbox. And in symbol layer type, I'm going to choose geometry generator. And what I'm going to do is to create a buffer and the difference with this buffer is that instead of increasing the area of the polygon, I'm going to reduce it. So instead of putting just a number here, for the size of the buffer, I'm going to just add the minus value so you can reduce the size of that polygon. But what I'm going to do is to reduce the size of each polygon depending on the population. So instead of doing just this, I'm going to use the population divided by uh, the area of this. Uh, polygons so to have a kind of a density so I'm going to open this and I'm going to transform this code into population so I'm going to go here in the fields and values option so 
I'm going to be able to see all the fields that are available in the uh, layer. I'm going to choose population here. And what I'm going to do is to divide the area between the population. So I'm going to, before the population, I'm going to find the area, which is geometry. Um, it's preceded by a um, dollar symbol. And I'm going to use the divider. And let's see how it looks like that. OK. The reason it happened this is because I need to reduce the value, not increase the value. So I'm just going to change this to minus. So there you go. So some polygons actually disappeared. And the reason they disappear is because uh, there's a very big area and a very little population. You want to change that behavior. What you can do is to divide this again. And let's try with 20. OK, now we can see the, all the polygons again. But I think they look almost the same. Let's try 15. Well, one polygon disappeared. Let's try 12. Let's try 10. Uh, let's try 5. OK, there you go. It doesn't really matter if the other polygon disappear because that means that basically there's no population in that polygon. So now this same code, we're going to copy it. And instead of just representing this visually, we're going to create a file with the same geometry information. So I'm going to close the layer styling and I'm going to bring back the toolbox and I'm going to look for something called geometry by expression. I'm going to open it. I'm going to choose my input layer, which in this case is the reprojected layer. The output geometry type is polygon. And here I'm going to paste my geometry expression and I'm going to create a, a temporary layer there you go close now if you want to compare your two uh, layers you can just go again here styling geometry generator and let's remove this. And there you go. Now, we're going to create a choropletic map of the new created layer, this one. So I'm going to go to the modified geometry layer, the one that we just created, and then graduated. I'm going to choose population. I'm going to change the color ramp to, let's say, greens. And then classify. There you go. So the greener, the higher density of population, and the lighter, basically the less dense. OK. So now, with this information, now we can create a 3D map. So what we can do is to install a plugin that it's called QGIS 2 3JS. So this one. I already have uh, that plugin installed. And 
So if you don't see it, just activate the web toolbar. Okay. And you will see this icon. Now, if you don't see the icon anywhere, you can just go to the menu web and you will see QGIS 23JS and the first option will allow you to create your 3D map. So I'm just going to click on this icon and I'm going to choose the modified geometry as my input polygon file. Then you will see the depiction of your polygon but it's flat so if you want to change it in 3D, you can just right click on this layer, go to properties, and in object type, you want to change this to extruded. And the height, in this case we're going to choose as well population, apply, and then you will create these massive polygons but with a simple expression you can change that so I'm going to divide this into let's say 100 let's see what happens still too much 1000 too much 10,000 okay we are getting the 100,000 there you go that looks much better and now you have a 3D map of the population density in the city of Denver ok, for the next ex exercise we're going to download um, a digital elevation model for the area of Denver so it's going to be the same area that uh, have been exploring. So there are two ways of doing this. One, there you can go to this web page called earthexplorer.usgs.gov and from there you can just select the area in the world that you want to use as your starting point. So if you go to Denver, and then you can draw a polygon, a square or something like that. And then go to datasets, digital elevation, SRTM, and I like the void field, and then results and then you will have the possibility to download uh, these files the only issue is that if you want to download them you have to log in okay so you need to create an account in the eros registration system it's really straightforward so if you have not done that just do it it's very simple the other option that you can use is a plugin in QGIS called SRTM Downloader. So go to man, uh, plugins, manage and install plugins, look for SRTM, SRTM Downloader, click on it, install your plugin. It will be available in the plugins toolbar. So is this icon. So you just have to press the icon and in order to download the tiles with the digital elevation data you have to select the boundaries of the area that you want to uh, download so in this case you can either put the coordinates by yourself or if you just select an area in your map so let's suppose that this is the the area that I want to, to look for it well I just need to press set canvas extent in this case I'm gonna look for information around this area 
so I'm gonna press set canvas extent uh, you need also an account for uh, to download this data so if I press download it will ask me my personal details uh, if you want to create an account you have to press this link so in this case I already have my details I just need to press OK and it will download the tiles so one tile is already downloaded and there you go the second one So in order to start working with these two tiles, we need to transform them. Uh, first, we need to merge them. So instead of two tiles, we will have one big tile covering the whole area. And secondly, we need to transform them uh, into a coordinate system in meters, because right now it's in, in degrees, as you can see here. Uh, one step before uh, we do all this is to check if the coordinate system that we are using here is the same coordinate system that we have been using for transforming the projection of all the data sets. So in this case, if you press this button, you will have the possibility to check if you are using the WGS84 uh, with degrees, which in this case is EPSG4326, or if you are already using the pseudo Mercator coordinate system. So if you are using WGS84, just change it to w WGS84 pseudo Mercator, and remember that the one that we are using is 3857. Okay, so in order to merge these two tiles, we need to go to Processing, Toolbox, and then look for um, for a tool called Merge. I already have used this tool before, so that's the reason it appears in the beginning. But if you have not used that tool before, it will appear in GDAL Raster Miscellaneous Merge. So just double click on the tool and in here you have to select the layers that you want to merge so select the two tiles that you just downloaded and you don't have to change anything here and I will create a temporary file so you just have to press run it will be very quick so once it's done you can see that uh, this ugly line that was separating both tiles it's gone you see so now we can get rid of these two tiles and we just can preserve the big one now we need to transform this into a coordinate system with um, meters not with degrees so in order to do that, we're going to use the same projection tool, but in this case applied to a raster file. So we look for a project and we will see that we have two options in, in here because I have used them both. The first one that is called warp, warp reproject is used for raster files and the second one called reproject layer is for vector layers so the first one you can find it in GDAL raster projections warp reproject and the second one reproject layer you will find it in vector general reproject layer so in this case this kind of file is a raster so we're going to choose warp double click select your layer that you want to reproject uh, you don't have to change the source of the coordinate system because we want to change from 4326 WGS84 to 
Pseudo Mercator EPSG 3857 Remember that if it's not available here you need to select it from this button and then deselect this look for Pseudo Mercator and since I have used these two systems before uh, I have them here but if you haven't you will see them here so the one that you want to select is this one the one with the EPSG code 3857 and that's it you don't have to do anything else just run this tool and it will transform the file now if you want to double check if it's uh, already in meters uh, right click on reprojected properties and just check if in the information tab you can see that the unit is meters now we can get rid of the merge which is in degrees and let's change the name of this one to SRTM and I'm gonna call it just single band gray now the first thing we can do with this file is to generate a hill shape map so I'm gonna duplicate this layer so duplicate means that just copy and paste the layer uh, without changing the layer itself so we're just gonna duplicate it and I'm gonna duplicate it again now the, the, the layer that is on the bottom I'm gonna just drag it to the very bottom and with these two layers I'm gonna change the names so the first one is going to be called color and the second one is going to be called hill shade and the last one that the one that is in the bottom I'm just going to call it a single band grade and I'm going to delete copy copy okay so I'm going to deselect the modified geometry here that we generated before you can drag it to the top so you can see what what is it about so it's this area that we created before and so the first step is to create a heel shade so click on that layer go to the styling button and where it says single single band gray just change it to heel shade now you don't see anything because the color one which it doesn't have anything it's uh, still on top so just deselect for now and then you will be able to see the hill shade okay this is a very simple hill shade with just uh, a one source uh, of light which in this case is at an altitude of 45 degrees and an azimuth of 315 that means that the light uh, is 45 degrees from the zenith to the horizon and the light comes from an azimuth of 350 degrees and you can see with this dial uh, the, the small dot is telling you the direction of the light so this is called a unidirectional hill shade you can change the direction of light just by moving the, the dial so you can change also the altitude for instance right now is 45 degrees from the zenith if we put zero it's going to be very light because it's as if the sun uh, were pointing right on top of the surface but if we put let's say 75 
now it's very dark because uh, it's as if the sun is in the horizon as if it was a sunset or a sunrise so let's keep it at 45 and the azimuth normally uh, by convention comes from 315 or the opposite to 45 Um, but there's also another option for hill shade, which is called multidirectional hill shade. So you can still change the altitude of the light, but um, the azimuth it doesn't make any difference because the source of light come uh, comes from every single direction. So let's gonna press it here. And now we have our multidirectional uh, hill shade. And if you move the dial, basically it doesn't change anything. But if you change the altitude, still uh, changes the, um, the position of the light uh, depending on the zenith. So uh, for this exercise, I'm just gonna choose 45 and I'm going to change the Z factor. So that's the exaggeration of the uh, of the altitudes to two. So we can make that much stronger. And I'm going to keep the multidirectional hill shade. So I'm going to close this and now I'm going to apply a color on top of this a layer. So I'm gonna select color here. I'm gonna select the layer. I'm gonna press the styling button and then I'm gonna go to single gray and instead of single gray I'm gonna change uh, I'm gonna choose single bla single band pseudo color. Uh, and the reason I'm uh, watching the hill shade again is because there are no values here so I need to change this so first of all I'm gonna ch uh, choose a color ramp so there are plenty of options here here or you can go to create new color ramp and select the catalog CPT city okay and then you will see several other ramp colors that are already created for you so if you press topography and you change you, you choose one of these i'm gonna change uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna choose this one just press ok you will see here so now the mode is continuous and that's the reason you are seeing something like that but you can put uh, equal interval so you can see all the range of colors and if you use equal interval you can change also the classes so to to improve the visualization of this DEM for instance I like seven classes and that's it now the problem is that now we don't see the hill shade so what ne we need to do is to blend this colorful map into the hill shade. So if we scroll down in this same window, there is an option that it's called layer rendering and we can change the blended mode. Right now it's normal, but we can uh, use for instance screen and now we can see the hill shade and the colors or we can overlay the colors on top of the hill shade but personally I like the multiply option and that's it you can also change the transparency of the color map so if you go to this uh, tab the glo you can change the global opacity but uh, if you use the blending mode, I don't think it's necessary. And there you go. Uh, if we put the modified geometry again, 
you can see our polygons on top of this and also you can put a blending mode into the polygon so they don't look like they are just attached like floating on top of the topography so if you click on the layer styling and then uh, below this uh, window there is the layer rendering and then the blended mode and you can also choose multiply or overlay so it depends on what you want to achieve so overlay in this occasion I think works better there you go um, so the next step is let's try to generate 3d polygons out of this map and represent them on top of this topographic map so for doing that we need QGIS 2 3JS so again it will appear in this toolbar which is the web toolbar or otherwise you can access the plugin going by uh, to the menu web and there you go QGIS 2 3JS so if you press the button which is this one Um, well, right now you can already see a, a small point in the center of the screen. So I'm just going to use my central wheel of the mouse. And okay, I already changed some values in this file. So that's the reason I can see them in 3D. Uh, but what if I want to see the the digital elevation model so I need to select which file I want to use to to be underground these polygons so let's click on it and there you go so now we are seeing just the digital elevation model but we are not able to see the the polygons and the reason of that is because we need to tell the program that we want the polygons to be on top of the digital elevation model so if you go to modify geometry right click properties and in C coordinate you want the mode to be instead of absolute relative to in this case the color layer there you go another possibility that we have with that digital elevation model is to transform it into contour lines which is possibly one of the most a recognizable topographic uh, features that we see in topographic maps so in order to do that we need to change the the digital elevation model into a contour map so that's very simple so I'm gonna deselect the modified geometry and I'm gonna duplicate my single band gray layer and I'm going to call the copy contours so this is the simplistic way so I'm gonna drag the contours layer on top of these two and I'm gonna select it styling and now instead of single band gray I'm gonna choose contours and it's as simple as that the problem with this representation is that you don't have the possibility to use uh, labels so it's um, you can change the contour interval for instance let's say that we ha we want the contour interval every 50 meters 
uh, with a symbol of this color and then my index contour interval every 100 uh, so yeah it's very quick uh, it looks good but you don't have many options so there's a, a better way to change this um, if you want to add labels and that kind of things so if you go to processing toolbox and then look for contours um, you will see the option which is called contour so you just have to double click select the input layer so in this case we can use the the one that we called contours which is the same file of the color and heel shade we are because basically we did not change the file we just changed the style of the file so we can change uh, we can use any of these four layers it's the same file so it doesn't really matter but in order to have some kind of uh, system or um, order we're going to use contours and then you have to change to which interval uh, the contour lines will be separated so we're going to ch uh, choose 10 meters and the program will create a, f uh, a field called eleb where all the elevations are going to be saved per each contour line so and that's it you have the possibility to, to create a 3d vector that you can actually visualize in cool gs2 3js uh, but for this occasion we're not going to produce anything however because it takes a lot of time i already have a file created but the next step is just to press run and it will create a temporary file but i'm going to use a file that i already created so i'm going to load my file into this uh, QGIS project, so in this case is this one, open, add, close. So this is the file, so what we want to do with this file, which is denser but clearer than the raster visualization, I'm going to show you this right now. So the fuzzy line is the raster visualization and the thin lines e are part of my um, new vector contour file. So what we're going to do now is to change programmatically the width of my um, lines. So I'm going to deactivate the, the raster file because it's very ugly and I'm gonna select my contours file and then I'm gonna see in the styling options of this file uh, I'm not gonna change the the type of lines I'm just gonna change the width what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do uh, first before I start changing the width of the lines is to change the color of these lines to a more standard uh, brownish color for contours so let's try this one yeah this one is okay and then instead of changing the width manually here I'm gonna change it programmatically depending on a series of um, uh, characteristics so if I press here and then I go to edit I have the possibility to produce a piece of code that will allow me to change the style of these lines depending on the value of the LF field so let's gonna start with the lines that are 100 so if I press if, so this is a statement 
uh, that it's gonna say if the following clause is fulfilled then do something so in this case the clause or the condition is if the value on this field elevation modulo is a mathematical function that allows me to divide the value that I choose between the values of my field and then the leftovers are calculated so if elevation modulo 100 equals 0 so that means that the division is exact then draw all the lines with a width of 0. Point, let's say 0. 0.8 but if this condition is not met then if the elevation values modulo let's say let's put an index in 50 equals 0 then draw my lines with a width of 0. Point, let's say half of the, the first one 4 and if not draw the rest of the lines with 0. 0.1 so now we need to close two parentheses so in this case is this one and this one now to understand what I did it's um, you can use the statement if and when you start uh, uh, making the, the, the statement you will see that if requires a condition and what happens if the result uh, when the condition is true and what happens when the condition is false so in this case we have uh, this condition this condition and this result but uh, basically it's nested okay now if we press ok we'll see that we have one thick line every 100 meters one thinner line every 50 and the rest of the lines are the lines uh, of every 10 meters basically now uh, the, the color I think it's very dark I'm gonna change it just a little yep that's it so now I'm gonna label these contours so if I press this button and I put single labels and instead of the ID of each contour I select the elevation field I can see my values here but as you can see they look very ugly so we can change that first we're going to add a a suffix so we can see that these values are in meters so if we put two pipelines like this and then we just add M like this we add an M suffix next to the the value so next we need to change the size of these labels because it's very big so we're gonna put a size of 5 I'm gonna zoom in to see what is happening okay and now I'm going to change the position of 
the labels because now they look very messed up so if I go into here which is the placement of the of the labels I can put them curved following the line but also I want them on the line and I'm gonna deselect above the line because I don't want them above the line so I just want them on the line and there you go as you can see now they are on the line but we want them a little bit separated from the line so we they don't look like melted in the line so we're gonna create a mask and to enable the mask we need to right click on the contours file properties and then select the tab masks and then click here on the symbol layer and then click here on the label mask okay and as you can see now we have a separation between the line and the label so the final step is just to create a more sophisticated map so we don't have these um, kind of islands without information to get rid of the small islands that we don't want such as these ones we just need to uh, tell the program that we want to represent only the lines that are larger than a certain number in this case uh, measured in meters so if we go to the contours and then uh, a styling button remember and then geometry generator so we already have a smooth geometry so what we can do is to add if dollar symbol linked is more than let's say 100 then show me the line if not don't show me anything so 100 is apparently not enough but if you increase this number let's say 1000 you will uh, see that these islands disappear so basically as you increase this number you will make disappear all the small lines or in this case um, if the line is larger than 1000 meters uh, it will show but if it's not it will disappear so 1000 or 10,000 and then you will show only a small amount of information the last, the last exercise uh, it's gonna be very simple because we're gonna copy a code from a web page called Haynes which is this one and we're gonna try to reproduce this kind of representation of topography which look more like a uh, sound waves so we're going to try to reproduce this it's very simple you just have to basically copy this code into one layer and that's it so in order to do that we're going to return to our project and we're going to create a new temporary scratch layer so go to menu layer create layer temporary scratch layer and uh, we're gonna call it just uh, lines but the geometry type of this 
temporary scratch layer is going to be polygons. So we're going to create a polygon layer, but uh, this polygon layer will be transformed into lines, and that's the reason we're going to call it lines. And the um, coordinate system, again, is going to be pseudo Mercator. We don't want new fields for this layer. We're just going to press OK. So right click on the on the layer go to properties go to symbology and then instead of single symbol choose the option inverted polygons and once you are there click on simple fill and go to geometry generator and open the code editor and here we're going to delete this information and we are going to copy the code that is provided in this web page as it is until the Wii so we're just going to copy the code and paste it here and basically that's it but we need to choose which digital elevation model we are going to use for this uh, process so we just want to delete this bit of information uh, and we're going to replace it by the layer that uh, it's uh, providing the elevations so we're going to delete this part and in here, in this list, we're going to go to uh, map layers and then we're going to choose one of the layers that we are using to generate the, 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 the elevations. So in this case, I'm going to use uh, color. We can use also heel shade or we can use also SRTM single band gray. All of them remember that are the same file so we can work with them and pretty much is that so we're just going to press ok and instead of a geometry type polygon we're going to change that to line strings and ok and here we go so there you have it you can put your scale map your color map and heel shade and if you approach to this area you can see what is happening now you can change the behavior of these lines so if I go to styling and then geometry generator and then code editor I can change the how many lines I want to show here so right now it's 50 but I can choose let's say 100 and how many points per line so the, the amount of points is the amount of curves that we will have along this path so I can say with more resolution 100 I'm gonna click OK and as you can see now it's denser there you go you can work with that you can just uh, play with the numbers in the geometry generator to change these values.